Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna to forge a super cool frontier style Bowie knife out of some of this steel rod and a bunch of these. All right, so here we are back in the shop playing with steel, trying to make something groovy and sharp or cool. You know, I think, uh, f isn't fire, isn't that what the kids are saying these days? How, how ironic is that? So I'm gonna start with this uh, 01 tool steel rod. So recent, well, last month I did a video that uh, has done pretty well, uh, over a million views on it. So a lot, of, a lot of you guys liked it. Did a little fighter style, and kind of building on that methodology. There, I've been I've been um, experimenting with uh, different patterns that you can do with uh, 52 and 100 steel ball bearings and stuff. Instead of just throwing it all into a can and smashing the whole thing together in the forge or under the press, uh, what you know, what can we do with symmetrical patterns, that kind of stuff? So I'll, I'll put a card uh, to that video up there, but. Today I'm kind of building on that idea, and I'm gonna I want to use a bunch of small or three sixteenths inch ball bearings, and see if we can get a finer pattern, and uh, still build this with the O1 tool steel as the edge steel. In fact, going around the entire uh, circumference or the uh, border of the blade here. So to do that, I'm using three sixteenths inch thick mild steel uh, to build a basically build a can, a very customized can. And then I've got some 3 8 mild steel square rod. And uh, that's going to keep everything together and keep the air out, keep all the steel in and everything like that. So the other thing that this uh, thicker steel for the can does, the 3 16 thick steel, is not only does it protect it from the atmosphere, it's more than adequate for that, but it also helps hold some heat as you get it up to forge welding temperature. And, you know, in very thin steel, or thinner stock, you know, you can lose heat as you go from the forge to the press or the hammer or whatever. And so that helps a little bit there. So having bent this uh, steel rod with the torch, uh, i got to clean that back up so that it will forge weld to the inside contents of our, of our customized can here. So that fits in there nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and clean these 3 16 ball bearings up. I don't know that they have any... Um, anti or rust inhibitor on them. Some brands do, some brands don't, but I guess it's just best to be safe and clean them up. It's a little acetone on there and uh, we'll start putting them in here. My original idea here was to have sort of a randomized pattern and just pile these bearings in there. And then I remembered that 3 8 is exactly twice the width of 3 16 So I actually have <laughs> have a problem here. I can't actually do any more than two layers and so there's really not enough uh, depth here to do sort of a randomized dump it in type pattern and that's why I'm taking the time to line them up carefully and it's sort of laborious. It's kind of one of those little uh, little travel games you, you had when you were a kid where you try to get the, the little uh, steel ball down into the hole around the maze or something crazy like that. Kind of like that. So we're going to go ahead and fill up the the all the gaps with uh, 1080 powdered steel and this steel also has uh, four percent content nickel powder in it which gives us a bright uh, finish after we etch the whole thing and gives us a nice contrast from the carbon steel so we'll go ahead and weld that whole thing up so it's more or less airtight minus uh, some very small pinholes we don't want this thing to blow up in the forge or you know pop like a, a balloon but Get this heated up here and you can see where down the center there uh, it wasn't as hot as it needs to be so just making sure that everything is heated up to forge welding temperature before we get it over to the uh, press and I did this I did this multiple times I, I want to say probably half a dozen times but I, I didn't uh, compress it very much each time as you can see uh, the idea is to try to get these all forge welded together so cutting the can off here, you saw I used the white paint. That's my favorite method for keeping the can from welding to the contents. And it, it worked great once again. So we'll get this billet out here. It's, that's, that's quite a chunk of steel right there. It's uh, fairly impressive. I lost some uh, powdered steel towards the end of my billet there and didn't have adequate material to forge weld those bearings together, or those, those uh, bearing balls together. So I just cut that off. And then I actually ended up cutting it off square here and you'll see that in a minute. Kind of a bummer to lose some of that material, but uh, it's it's more important to have a solid billet, in my opinion. So I'm going to try to go ahead and work this down on the power hammer and take it taking it easy to start with. 
And here's where I, I, I start running into problems. Um, basically what happened is, is I made this billet too wide. And you'll see right here, I'm trying to work this tang end down here and it just bends uh, immediately. And it's at least under the hammer here. And uh, trying to straighten that back out. What I ended up with very quickly was uh, some failed welds along in, in the middle there. Um, the, the welds just came apart that's not going to work so we're going to cut that piece off here and we just all of a sudden we have a lot smaller knife so that's a bummer but um this is this is an experimental project and this i haven't i have not done this exact thing before and so i don't really know how well it's going to work uh the theory in theory is sound i guess but there's uh there's some technical things that you have to figure out as you go and that's that's just what happened here so I ended up losing most of my billet and um, I think you know if I had used the press initially uh, maybe I could have uh, babied that along to where once you know you keep forging it at a good heat it sort of uh, strengthens those welds a little bit but I didn't do that I tried to work it down on the power hammer and that was more or less unsuccessful and this is what we have left so we're gonna go ahead and forge a, uh, a nice little uh, boot knife, boot dagger, or something like that. So we'll, uh, at least we have a solid piece of steel here that we can uh, make some kind of knife out of. Forge in the bevels a little bit here, and everything looks solid at this point on this piece here. So, you know, it's not a total loss. I mean, that's really the worst case scenario. You can lose the whole billet. <laughs> that's. Uh, you know, that happens sometimes. Well, what a bummer. That was a lot of wasted material and time. This is what we have now. So what happened there? Uh, a couple things, I think. First of all, the, the real wide section there that I had on this billet. I don't think that did me any favors, especially with the smaller size ball bearing. Basically, those were welded, but not adequately. Basically, I lost three quarters of my billet. This material here, this is all towards up, up towards the tip, which as it's narrower, I think that also helped with the compression during the original forge welding process. I can make a knife out of this. So this is this is one of those projects where we're gonna make a knife. We're gonna make this work somehow. It's not a buoy, but it will be a knife. The other thing that may have contributed to saving this last little bit of billet is that once I got down to like the last quarter of the billet, I aggressively forged the thickness down on the power hammer at a high forging heat, which I think serves to sort of press those uh, bearing balls against each other and, and sort of impinge on each other and strengthen those welds. And if I'd done that with the billet in the very beginning, we might be working on a buoy still, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm just going to keep those billets narrower in the future. I think that's going to be the best the best bet and uh, forge, forge the width out instead of trying to do it the way I did this time. So I've got the tang holes drilled in here, or I should say the, the bolt holes in the tang. And uh, using that to, to line up sort of where my uh, blade's going, uh, just to try to make this even, you know, based on where the handle's at. And this is not going to be uh, as, as exact as uh, using some kind of uh, sophisticated measuring material, but it will be close enough here. So get this uh, rough ground here, and I'm also checking for sort of any inclusions in the blade area. And everything looks good so far so I also want to grind the tang down taper that a bit get rid of some of the weight even that all up and you saw earlier I was uh, normalizing it letting it air cool and we did multiple thermal cycles on that and then finally after rough grinding we'll do do a quench quench cycle harden the blade and then we'll go ahead and temper it before we finish grind the blade So this is a double-edged blade here, and that means that you're grinding four different facets and they all need to be symmetrical or even uh, to each other, side to side, all that kind of stuff. So it's a little more involved than a typical knife. Fortunately, I guess it's a small, small dagger, so it's not too terrible bad. But go ahead and grind that down to uh, 220 grit and start hand sanding at 220. Go up to uh, 600 on this one and we'll go ahead and etch it in the ferric chloride to bring out the pattern that we've put into this blade. 
So you can start to see a little bit of the ball bearing pattern there. And on this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, natural burlap micarta, which I think is pretty cool looking, and some white G10 liners. And this, this particular micarta is, like I think it's like 190 thousandths thick, something like that. So that'll be suitable for this being sort of a boot knife type style blade. We don't want a real thick handle on anyway, so a little slimmer profile, that'll work out good here. So we've got the glue up uh, process here, just mixing up some two-part epoxy, the two-ton stuff, and layering up those liners with the handle and then the bolts, of course, as well. Once the epoxy is cured, we can go ahead and shape the handle and do the final hand sanding, and we're good to go. All right, well, this is not the knife that I set out to build. However, we do have a knife out of this experimental project, so that's something to be happy about. I'm going to show you some pictures of it, but before I do that, if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see on the channel here, consider supporting the channel. It doesn't cost you anything to hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And if you want to go a step further, there is a Patreon link in the description as well as my website where I put up products similar to this and other cool stuff as quickly as I can. So you can check that out as well. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next video.